I'm Taylor. I'm from Birmingham. Um, hey. Princess Bride has been one of my favorite movies since my sister showed it to me years ago. Um, and I find it to be <laughs> one of the most quotable movies out there. Good. Yeah. Um, with that being said, what was one of your favorite parts of working on Princess Bride? All of my parts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and also just, you know, being there, because it was a, you know, you'd be walking around the set and suddenly you'd hear off in the corner somewhere Mandy and Chris Guest and Rob Leonard doing doo-wop. Um, for, I mean, it was just, it was that kind of set, you know, a lot of funny people, a lot of smart people, um, hanging out and just, you know, having a good time and doing something that was, they knew was going to be, we didn't know that the movie was going to be such a huge thing. I mean, you ask anybody who was doing it at the time, and they can't, they can't tell you, oh, I knew this movie was going to have this kind of resonance over the, over the last, you know, how many years. Um, but we knew it was special. That's why we were doing it, you know, to work with Rob, to work with these other actors, to do this particular script, to play these particular roles, because they were all great roles. Every role in the movie is a terrific role. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Carrie Hudson. Hi. Uh, so that's actually a perfect lead into my question, which was... Uh, a segue. <laughs> um, how, what were your thoughts about doing Princess Bride and Nightmare Before Christmas when you were filming? You know, Princess Bride was just a very special, different kind of project. And you don't really know how those are going to turn out, that they're going to turn into cult classics that they are. But how did you feel about those two movies specifically when you were filming them? I just, I knew, as I said to this young woman, I knew Mrs. Bride was going to be special. I'll tell you the time I knew uh, Nightmare was going to be special is when they sent me that VHS to look at. Uh, and it was literally a, a poor quality, black and white. I stuck it in the VHS machine and I was sitting and watching it and taking notes so that I could tell them what lines I'd like to work on again. And at the time I had uh, three kids. Uh, my oldest was, I believe, um, uh, six, four, and like one and a half. And, uh, and then I had my son, who was one and a half. And I'm sitting there watching it, and I hear these little people enter in the room. And they don't know what's going on. They're just sort of galvanized by, as most kids are, you know, TV's on, I'll watch. And they walked in, and literally within five minutes, they were transfixed. Totally transfixed. Uh, and watched the entire movie with me, in this black and white grainy version, which was nothing like the you know the full the full version. That's when I knew it was going to be something. I didn't know what. I didn't know again it was going to have this kind of resonance over time. But I certainly knew it was going to be special. Thank you, Sharon. Go on over here. I'm Nigel. Uh, I'm from Jack, Alabama, and I was curious. Having worked both in live action film and voiceover work, what are some unexpected differences between the two, and how would you compare the two? Um, very specifically, you know, when you're doing voice acting, at least for animated movies, the ones that I've done, and I've done just a couple, uh, you're basically the tool of the director. Uh, and you're sitting there, I mean, I just did. It, um, the Jack voice for the Halloween display at Disneyland this coming October, whenever it is, okay? And I'm sitting in a studio and essentially I'm running I do a line and then they ask me to try it a different way. And I do it a different way. And then uh, they ask, they go, oh, can you do a little more of this? Or can you do a little more? Can you hit this word? Can you hit this word? Can you do this? And they'll give you the line reading. Uh, or can you give us three different line readings in one take and then we'll pick a, a, a line reading. And that's what the voice, the animated voice of work is like. And it's fun because you have to kind of come up with stuff. You know, oh, I'll just do this. Um, you know, they give you an idea, but then you have to translate it into the character's behavior. When you're working on a movie or you're working in the theater, you're working with other actors. You're, you're working through things on a day-by-day -day basis and there's a kind of continuity and you have control over, to a certain extent, in, in, in the theater you do, over your performance. You have probably less 
um, uh, control over your performance in the movie because the director ends up choosing the takes that he's going to use because each scene is broken down into a variety of takes. If you and I are talking, you know, this gentleman and I are talking in a scene, there's going to be a camera over here shooting way back the scene. Then they're going to come in, they're going to shoot over my shoulder, they're going to shoot him, then they're going to shoot me over his shoulder, then they're going to shoot a close-up of him, then they're going to shoot a close-up of me. Generally, that's the kind of general way that TV and movies are done. So that within that framework, you know, they can choose any of those takes. And I don't have any control, so I don't, I, I either have to be the same in every take, or try different stuff. But then usually a director will say, no, 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 I want the same thing. You know, so you have less control. Um, you have less control in voiceovers, you have more control in movies, and you have the most control when you're doing a play. Because you know what you're creating in the performance, night to night. Does that explain it? Cool. Yes, sir. Oh, you and I just did a scene together. We did. <laughs> you were great, by the way. Thanks, you were great, too. <laughs> what's your name? Uh, my name is... What's your name? Uh, Austin. Oh, oh wait, 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 this gentleman. I, well, I recognize him. Uh, Forgive me. Uh, we'll, we'll get you. Yes, go ahead. Uh, my name's Austin. I'm from Hoover. Uh, sorry. Austin from Hoover. And um, I thought you were just amazing in The Princess Bride. I love that movie. Oh, um, <laughs> I thought your facial expressions were just so spot on and added so much to the portrayal of that character. Um, and with that in mind, I wanted to ask you about your time on DS9 when you did one episode. Uh, any stories about that? DS9. Did you say something? Oh, sure. DS9. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Austin, by the way, works for my publicist. Uh, okay. Uh, it was great. I, 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 uh, that's an, that was an interesting show to do. And I also had a couple of friends on the show. Rene Bourgeois and Armin Schindler were both guys that I knew. I'd worked with them before. Uh, and ended up working with um, um, Rene later on Judging Amy. Uh, when he was on Judging Amy. And I did a bunch of shows on Judging Amy. Uh, those are fun shows to do too because you're in a world that is you know, totally created by the, the people who who uh, came up with a solo Star Trek idea in the first place. And you're just, you know, you're sort of slotted into the, to the role that you're playing. Everybody else has been doing the same thing for a long time. Uh, but very lovely people. And uh, it was a great, yeah, it was a nice experience. I had a good time. I only did one. I enjoyed the question. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, what's your name? Ryan. Hi, Ronnie. Thank you. And we're actually running out of time, so we're going to do one last question. 
And uh, I'll make it. I can see it. Crap. Your name? Oh. Hi, Joe. I didn't realize it went that fast. Do you think there's a chance for all that ever be a sequel to The Princess Bride? There was one in the hopper that is, William Goldman was trying to write Buttercup's Baby, which was what he was going to call it. Yeah. And he couldn't crack it. He couldn't. He said he tried and he tried, and he just couldn't come up with a story. Uh, I wanted him to write something called Hubbardick's Revenge. <laughs> but that suggestion got shut down. <laughs> So your name? I'm Ben from Montgomery. Hi. We're going too far back, so I thought. Oh wow. Go away, Besides, I don't want to get in row. I love Dog Day Afternoon. Oh, thank you. Your row, I love. Did you ever on that row in that movie? And what was it like working with Al Pacino? Well, that was my first movie. Yeah. And uh, I've been working in the theater for a number of years. I was in my early 30s. I was like I was 22 years old. I did my first movie. Uh, and um, I uh, did, did, it was it was directed by a director named Sidney Lumet. Sidney directed uh, after Dog Day, but also before uh, a movie called Network. Uh, he directed Serpico. He directed Twelve Angry Men. He was a great, great uh, American director. And Sidney came from the theater, so he rehearsed a lot before you did the movie, which doesn't happen very often. And so that was a great experience because we spent three weeks rehearsing that. And we did a lot of improvising, Al and I did. Uh, and Al was uh, Pacino. I, I, I hate to be one of those people who does other people. Al. Just, he's just my Al. You know. uh, but uh, Pacino and I, you know, he was a theater, Al, for, that's how he started in the theater. So we had a sort of common vocabulary with Sydney. So working together was fabulous. Uh, very collaborative, very, you know, no star or bullshit, pardon the expression. Uh, uh, just, you know, working actors was, is the way he, he approaches his work. And it was a fabulous experience. Thank you so much for that question. Uh, any final thoughts, Chris? Final thoughts? Um, I just want to thank you all for being here. You know, this, this being, uh, coming to these uh, conventions is important to me. Uh, because, uh, especially when you work in the theater, you have a sense of the audience, always. You always have a sense of every night, even if you're doing a play for six months, eight months, a year, every night is different because the audience is different every night. Um, and when you're working on movies and television, you're on a set with, you know, the camera people and the lighting people, and they're always interesting and it's fun to do, uh, but it's not, you don't get this thing of what the audience's reaction is to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it, in, a, in a sense, this makes me feel like the movies that I've done have been collaborative. Because you tell me what your experience is when you watch them. And that's really important to me. And I find it also very humbling. And I thank you. Thank you very much.